Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Julene Greer, and I would like to introduce uh, my assistant for today. Hi, my name is Jugal Butadev. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineering student here at UTA. I'm also working as a research assistant at URARI, working with Dr. Greer, College of Liberal Arts and School of Social Work. Uh, we are going to be presenting now, which is a robot later on for a small presentation. You can program now on various languages. It's a very interesting robot, so hang on till the end of the presentation. Thank you. Great, thank you. And this is live, and I realized that I don't have anything to click slides. I'm a theater professor that works with robots. And I just want to let that hang in the air there for a couple of seconds. That is a really strange combination of things. But I think by the end of this 15 minutes, you will start to get an idea of what uh, theater is. Uh, the previous slide was just talking about what, how theater methodologies can inform social robots so that in the future, we may actually have a best friend that's a social robot. So for this talk, I really want you to look at, think about three different areas. Think about theater, think about social robots, and think about our social awareness, meaning our best friend. So the first thing I wanna do is break it down a little bit. What is theater? Well, theater is a collaborative fine art. It utilizes speech and movement and dance and text and performance. Uh, what other things? You know, a, a drama, comedy, uh, performance styles. All of those things together in order to tell a story. So what is a robot? Well, in a very general, simple sense, a robot is a machine that is capable of carrying out programmable commands. Okay, so what's a best friend? Most everyone knows what that is, right? These are some of the things I thought about. Someone you spend time with, someone you laugh with, someone you cry with, someone you stick up for, someone you listen to, someone that you care about, someone that you have a social relationship with. Okay, so now that you've heard these three different areas, theater, fine art, robots, social awareness, best friends. Let's take a look at how I put those three things together. I humanize robots and I engineer emotion with theater methodologies. How? Good question. Let's look at empathy, embodiment, and experiential methodologies. First one, empathy. Theater arts definitely has the ability to teach empathy. Right, we, we go to a, a live stage play and the character on stage is going through something very, very intense and we feel for them. Well, let's put it into a context maybe that a university student would understand. Let's say you go and you see your best friend. You go over there, you sit down next to them, you talk about your classes, how you need to study for that test, all these different things and all of a sudden, you realize you're very, very chatty best friend is not saying anything at all. And you go, hey, you know, what's up? What's going on? And then the best friend goes, oh, this happened, and then this happened, and this happened. And you went, oh my gosh, no, really? Tell me about it. You empathized with what your friend was go going through, her concerns. They're not your concerns. You're empathizing for her. Now let's look at the word embodiment. How did you know that your friend had something going on? Well, you can look at speech, motion, pose, sound. Did your friend sit in the chair with her shoulders rolled over? Was her body sort of uh, collapsed in on itself? She didn't speak for a minute and a half. When she did, it was oh, a big sigh. So she embodied the concern that was body, bothering her, which then translated in you being empathetic. Now let's look at experiential. We all experience emotions. Everyone in this room, we all experience them, right? But differently and in different ways. Let me talk to you about how a performance artist 
looks at experiential methodologies. So I experience an emotion, I, I gather it together, I try to think about what might be good for that character in that play, and then I have it happen in the play, live on stage, and I present it to an audience. Now that's the difference. People who are not theater artists don't usually present their emotions as soon as they have them. They don't run to find a stage and go, hey, by the way, I'm having a really crappy day. Maybe. But performance artists do. And what that means in terms of my work is that we have to perform what we feel. Robots are essentially performing for us. So I'm hoping that's starting to kind of come into a little more clarity. If we have theater establish, establishing the behavior between humans, the way they gesture to each other, how they speak, the movement, emotion, those relationships create character and personality in a play, right? So then in theater performances, we are using a human-human model. What I've done with my work is take all the vast, fascinating, interesting things that people do as human beings, and I've recontextualized it for a human-robot model. So here's some of the outcome of humanizing robots. Robots that behave more like humans. Robots that humans can trust. Robots that can engage and connect with humans. We can engineer emotion in a robot to create an authentic human-robot relationship. And then we come to that last bullet, because that's the question I get asked over and over. Why? Why would you want to make robots more emotional? Here's one of the reasons, here's four reasons why. These are social robots. I'm going to briefly tell you about each one of them. You see that little uh, uh, animal robot? That robot's name is Paro. It's designed after a baby harp seal. That is a pet therapy robot that is used with people who have Alzheimer's in some of the advanced stages where they become very agitated. There have been studies with Paro that when someone becomes agitated, if they take Paro, Paro purrs and moves and hums and coos and bats its eyelashes. And that person can pet that pet therapy robot and they calm down. Now here's the thing that you might ask. Don't we have dogs and cats for pet therapy? Yes, we do. Social robots are not trying to take the place of dogs and cats and living human beings. They are filling a gap. Not everybody likes dogs and cats, right? And a dog and a cat has a certain amount of behavior that you never can be completely sure about. You can always be sure about a baby harp seal. Real quickly, let's look at the uh, robot with the uh, young child there. That's Robot Now. That is the robot that we'll see briefly today. That robot's dressed up like a little doctor. One of the studies that uh, Now uh, was in quite recently was they simply wanted kids to come to the doctor, get a shot, and be distracted by the robot. That's it. That's all they wanted. Just distract my child while they're getting a shot. What did they find? Kids asked to come back for shots. Yes, because they wanted to see that robot again. So let's look at the bottom robot, that bearish looking uh, robot. That's a prototype of a robot that can carry and lift people out of hospital beds. Might not be something you're thinking about right now, but it is a very significant problem. When folks are in the hospital, they do sometimes need to get out of the bed. Healthcare workers need to lift them up. Sometimes they injure themselves. If we can develop a social robot that is able to lift people and we trust and connect and engage to that social robot, oh my goodness. Finally, let's look at the assembly of uh, robots down there. That is a telepresence robot called The Beam. And that can let you have a meeting halfway across the world. Or say, let's just say you get sick. If you're a student, you can't go to class for two weeks. You don't want to lose the semester. You could go to class as a beam. This is the stuff that I'm 
oh, no, I did it wrong way, sorry there. This is the stuff I'm really, really excited about though. This is UTA's social robots. These robots are here on this campus. Yes, I know it is so cool. Uh, they are in the, the Emotional Robotics Living Lab, which I direct. The one with the red is called NAO, N-A-O. The one with the blue eyes, that's Pepper. The one with the black border in the eye is called Jibo. Very exciting, exciting work being done here. This, <laughs> this is not the face of social robots. This is, okay. So what I'd like to do now is that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start a quick video of now. This is the robot that you're going to see, okay? But this video is from the um, manufacturers and you get, just get a chance to watch it, get, a little, get to know it a little bit better. But you see the thing that I really love is not just watching videos of robots, but being in the same room with them, seeing how they are alive. So go ahead and enjoy the video and now we'll be coming out in just a minute or two. Because it's dark, it's okay. Uh, hold on just a second. I can put him in front of the light. Hello. Hello, now. Wow, what is that thing lying on the ground? Hello now 75. Hello now 41. Have you seen my Roberta? Uh. I don't know. I am sorry. Ouch! Sorry. I am okay. I suppose I should get up. That's better. Okay, so I have to tell you something quickly. Here's uh, now right here. We weren't trying to hide now from you. Now is scared of the dark. <laughs> and as soon as the lights went down, it went, I can't see anything, I can't see anything. So we were trying to get the light from the laptop to make it so it didn't feel so scared. So very interesting thing to happen on a talk between uh, humans and robots, right? So this is just a very brief, brief, um, uh, interaction with now and uh, he has a little message for all of you now Ted talk 
Huh? Hello, everyone. My name is Now. I am a robot. I am excited to be at TEDx UTA. If you would like to know more about me and the Emotional Robotics Living Lab, please ask Dr. Greer. Goodbye. So I can't do any better than that. So I will end my presentation with Now. I hope that, oh, thank you. I hope that gives you an idea of all of the amazing different ways that humans and social robots can interact. And if you're interested in more, please come by and talk to me. Thank you.